Welcome to the solutions to the waves and sound problem set, problems numbers 7 through 10. Let's go ahead and get started with number 7. How does air temperature affect the tuning of a wind instrument? Various wind instruments shown over to the right hand side. There are many more examples of course. Anybody who's been in marching band knows that when you go from out, uh, from inside to outside, that the temperature of the air does affect the tuning of a wind instrument. Why is this? If we take a wind instrument, which is an air column, open at one end and close at the other, as an example, and we say that that air column has a length L, We know from previous study that in order for a note to be produced in that air column that a portion of a standing wave needs to be produced in that air column. So we know that the length of the air column L is proportional to the wavelength. You haven't learned yet by what factor it's proportional, but you do know that it's proportional to the wavelength. That's the important part here. So if the temperature increases, what's that mean? Let's analyze the wave equation V equals F times lambda and see how everything shakes out here. Well, we already know that if the temperature increases, that the speed increases. So the speed of sound in air goes up as the temperature rises. But does that change the length of the air column itself? No, it does not. So if it doesn't change the length of the air column L, which is proportional to lambda, that means that the wavelength is not going to change either. That means that the temperature increases causing the speed to go up, that means the frequency has to go up as well. That means the note that you played inside is going to go up in pitch if you go, out, if you go outside to warmer air. Likewise, if you were to go outside to colder air, the pitch would decrease because the speed of sound would decrease. That's how the air temperature affects the frequency of a wind instrument. Number eight, a soft drink bottle resonates as air is blown across its top. What happens to the resonant frequency as the level of the fluid in the bottle decreases? All right, we're just going to use, even though it, um, uh, a soft drink bottle tends to have an irregular shape to it, just for conversation's sake, we'll say that our bottle has this shape to it. And it starts off with this much fluid. Let me actually change that to be a little lower for drawing purposes here. Let's say it starts out with this much fluid. That means our air column at that moment has this length L, which we know is proportional to the wavelength of the note produced. Well, if we reduce the level of the fluid in the bottle, say now down to to here, what has happened as we have increased the length of the air column L, which is proportional to the new wavelength. Now we can do an analysis of V equals F lambda, the wave equation. has the speed of sound 
in both those air columns change? The answer is no, because the air is still the same air. So it hasn't changed medium, so the speed is constant in both air columns. And by decreasing the level of the fluid, we have increased the wavelength. Well, how must frequency respond in order to keep the speed the same? The frequency obviously has to decrease. This should make sense to us if you've ever messed around with uh, blown across the top of the soda bottle and changing the, the uh, length of the air column by different levels of the fluid. Okay? As the air column gets longer, the frequency decreases because the wavelength increases. More to come on the length of the uh, on the air column that is open on one end and closed at the other. Okay, number nine. The range of human hearing extends from approximately 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Find the wavelengths of these extremes when the air is at a temperature of 27 degrees Celsius. The first thing that we need to do is find the speed of sound at 27 degrees Celsius. And so we take our 331 meters per second at STP. We're going to add 0 0.6 times the 27 degrees above STP. When we do the math there, we get a speed of sound of 347.2 meters per second take our answer out to extra digits there. All right, now what we have to do is two V equals F lambda calculations at our different frequencies to find our different wavelengths. 347.2 equals 20 times wavelength. And our wavelength here would be 17.4 meters. We'll just do it to three digits. Repeat for the other extreme. 347.2 equals 20,000 times lambda. This gives us a wavelength of 1.74 times 10 to the negative 2 meters or 1.74 centimeters. That's quite an extreme. That means the distance for compressions at 20 hertz is 17.4 meters between compressions whereas at 20,000 hertz it's 1.74 centimeters. Lastly we go to number 10. A group of hikers hears an echo three seconds after shouting. If the air temperature is 22 degrees Celsius, how far is the mountain that reflected the sound wave? First thing to note here is our first wave phenomenon that we're talking about here is reflection. A reflected sound wave is called an echo. Clearly we're going to need to know the speed of sound in the air temperature in the air of this particular event. And so we have to go ahead and calculate what that is um, based on the 22 degrees Celsius. So we go ahead, we start off with our 331 meters per second at STP. We add 0 0.6 times 22 degrees Celsius above STP and that gives us a speed of 344.2 meters per second. This ends up being a simple V equals X over T calculation where how far away is the distance the mountain is away. We have the time here, kind of. We'll talk about that in a second. And we just calculated the speed. 344.2 equals X over. Well, if it takes three seconds for the sound to go out, hit the mountain, reflect, and come back to our ears so that we hear it, how much time does it take for the sound to get just to the mountain? 
Well, clearly that would be half the value given to the problem, uh, which is 1.50 seconds. Solve for x, and we get a distance from the um, hikers to the distant mountain to be 516 meters. Okay, this will do it for problems 7 through 10. Uh, in class tomorrow, you'll be tackling problems 11 and 12.